Good evening, guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayoko Fishala. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Today, we're going to be talking about Hebrews chapter six, and we're going to be exploring specifically, you know, what we're supposed to be doing in our waiting season. And I know like a lot of people are in the waiting season right now. You might be waiting for um, to get married. You might be waiting to have kids. You might be waiting to just get the admission into university. You might be waiting for money, like for funds for many different projects that you have you might be waiting for a job right so this I just I read this um chapter yesterday and I just felt very confused about a lot of things and the more I basically meditated on the scripture and just kind of like used the soap method to kind of understand the word of the Lord I'm sorry my roommate is talking in the background but we're gonna continue because like hey um, so the, if you don't know the soap technique is basically like using scripture, observation, analysis, and prayer to study, to Bible study. And apparently it's the most effective way to Bible study. Um, I didn't use it before, but yesterday I used it and like, I was, you know, like I just found like little, little things that basically give the scripture like a different light. And um, yeah, I this Hebrews chapter six really struck, it struck out to me because I feel like no matter like what phase you are in life, like you will always be waiting for something. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, how is your composure like in that waiting season? And this um, sermon will not only be about waiting, it's going to be about how, like who we are, what we're doing and how you know we're basically dealing with the waiting season like what are we doing in the waiting season and how are we learning what are we doing what is the culture like in the waiting season is basically what we're going to be talking about it's going to be specific to the gospel so it's just going to be Hebrews chapter six I'm going I basically shared a short one time and I was trying to explain to you guys about how really um you know messed up some versions of the Bible are, and I used to go, I used to reference NLT, but I find like NIV is better than NLT. So I'll definitely say like, if you want to get a different, you know, translation of a scripture, go to NIV. Um, I feel like this scripture, Hebrews chapter six, verse one, literally just pointed out that, hey, like, you know, like it's not, all the versions that are actually accurate. So I'm going to be starting using the soap method for especially Genesis um, Hebrews chapter six, verse one, because that basically gives light to the rest of the chapter. Because if you read everything, you'd be like, huh? Okay, let's just start. And before we even begin, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your understanding. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and your word. And thank you, Lord, for giving us, us your commandments and your regulations so that we can be the best version of ourselves, so that we can make it into your hope, so that we can make it into heaven. But I give you all the glory, O oh God, for our hope is found in you. And we rejoice in you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as we get into your word today, O oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will illuminate our path, illuminate our minds, oh God, and we submit ourselves to you to learn from you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as I teach today, oh God, I pray that I do not teach with my own understanding, but you, your Holy Spirit speaks through me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So I'm just going to start this, by the way, it's the King's James Version. I don't know if you can see there, it's the King's James Version. So he says, Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. And somebody out there is like, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to like, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards Christ. If you don't get the context, even if you read like the old chapter and you're trying to literally like understand that chapter one, like you will be confused. Except like the Holy Spirit like deciphers like, you know, what that actually meant or means. So let's go to um 
NLT. NLT gives a totally different translation. Like it's so different. NLT says, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. What does NIV say? All right, so we're still going to go back to the King James Version. Let's keep that in your mind. And I know is basically saying that let's not go over, over the message of repentance. You know, let's just like basically, you know, move forward. Um, I'm trying to look for NIV. Okay, I think I see it here. Okay, so NIV says, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundations of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in god so which one would you say like is the best translation let's go back to like kjv again but i feel like it's very important that we go back to kjv kjv says living the, therefore living the principles of the doctrines of christ let us go on onto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards god so what i observed when i was reading scripture was that i, I observed the text that he said not laying again the foundation of repentance like i feel like if you read both niv and nlt it, what i found in common is basically saying that let's not basically keep going back to the to the past and repeating the same you know um message over again over and over again um so my analysis is that it emphasizes that they should basically stop repeating the same sermon like i said about the gospel the list was given to um, Paul, this was given Paul as the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith. Well, I meant that the least was given by Paul. And I'm reading my notes here in case like there was an error. Um, <laughs> and towards God, doctrine of baptism, laying of hands. We've not gotten to that part. But essentially is like the, this uh, verse is basically saying that let us basically move on from preaching the message of repentance and you see why paul basically emphasizes that we ought to move forward and and it's really important because like we're all waiting for something but what we all have in common as christians is that we're waiting for christ to come right so we're waiting for christ to come but it's like the message that we are feeding on is really important so it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrines of christ and i'm repeating this over and over again so they can basically like you can will can be on the same level and so we can understand this together it's so let us go on onto perfection that is also an important context in this um scripture an observation that you ought to really decipher is that let us go on to perfection while we're waiting let us not just wait in mediocrity let us wait in perfection you know so not laying again the foundations of repentance like the foundation of repentance basically says that you know if you sin christ will forgive you and you're going to go back to normal and it's going to be like life as usual right and then you keep doing the same circle of you know lifestyle circle of sins and forgiveness and sins and forgiveness but you see why paul is saying that there is actually consequences of what you're doing and i feel like we've talked about this on this channel but then we're gonna i'm gonna remind you guys again so that you can renew your mind and understand why sinning is actually you know really bad okay so um, it says, it says a lot. It says, you know, while in when in a waiting season, right? Let us aim towards perfection, not mediocrity, right? Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Like, yes, we get it. Christ is going to forgive you, but there's obviously consequences from sinning. It says from dead works, but and of faith towards God. You see, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying of on of hands and of resurrection of the dead. And of eternal judgment, right? Let us not repeat the same sermon over and over and over again. Like we get it that, you know, these things are true and they're the fundamental parts of, you know, the gospel. But like we ought to move on from this. Like baptismal is like, you know, you sinning and then you have that, you know, really um dirty lifestyle and then like realizing now, huh, like, you know, I actually want to renew my life in Christ Jesus and then you go wash yourself, you know? I remember when I was in my own baptism and then Pastor Steve um, was like, you know, like if we kind of like check into the water of the the baptismal, like we'll probably 
in the spiritual, if we look at it from the spiritual eye, we would actually see that the water is really, really dirty because of the sins that are in the water. Because it's washing away the sins. And it's like, yes, we get it. You know, laying of hands, right? You know, puts the anointing on you. You know, your, your anointing can be taken from the devil through your evil deeds, right? From the resurrection of the dead and of the eternal judgment. Like, but we have to move on from this message. And it's like, and the third verse says, and it's, and this will we do, you know, if God permits, right? Like, and this will, I interpreted this third verse as like, you know, we will preach all of this message again, like if God permits that we should actually preach it, but we're going to actually like move on from this, right? But like NLT basically says that, oh, like, you know, we will, um, you know, uh, stop preaching this, you know, for a sec, you know, if, you know, hey, if God permits, right? <laughs> and then the fourth verse says, for it is impossible for those who are, who we are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly, heavenly gift, right? And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good work of the good word i'm sorry guys and i've tasted of the good word of god and the powers of the world to come and um if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance saying that they cru crucify to themselves the son of god afresh and put him to an open shame um this part is really interesting because like when i first read it i'm like um okay cool like this is really awesome like you know uh it is impossible for for those ones who were once, you know, that tasted the heavenly gift, the Holy Ghost, they have the Holy Ghost inside of them. They've been made partakers of the Holy Ghost, right? It is impossible for those ones who were once enlightened, right? When I read it, like, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. I've tasted the heavenly gift, da, 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 and I've tasted the good word of the Lord, right? And the past to come, it, it's impossible for them to, it's impossible to renew them again onto repentance, right? It, it's impossible if they fall away again it's impossible basically to renew them onto repentance seeing that they crucify to themselves the son of god afresh and puts him to an open shame right if we're preaching like you see there's a there is a repercussion to the gospel of repentance and doctrine of baptism of laying of and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment there is a consequence of actually repeating the same old record over and over again because eventually those people will figure out that you know if christ you know can forgive you why can't i just go sin again right i remember there's a, there a pastor and i'm not going to name the pastor too talking about the fact that you know um we have we're a new creation and like you know christ is going to forgive you we're above the law and so like we can basically do whatever we want to do but like it's not the case <laughs> like you need to really get into the word understand it meditate on it to really understand what the love of God really means and what what you know what it means for you to love Christ right the Bible says that if you love me God speaking here you will obey my commandments does that not mean anything right does that not mean anything even in the in today's age right it says like you know those people they are they've tasted the, the power of the Holy Spirit you know but then they hear this word that if they sin Jesus will forgive them and they will be refreshed, renewed, baptized, made anew, right? And then they'll come back. But Paul is saying that realistically, it's impossible for these people to come back again. It's actually impossible. It is impossible. It says, seeing that they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And I like the analogy. And I'm going to explain the, the second part of that, verse 6. But let's just go back. Let's bounce into verse seven for a sec here. It says, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meats for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. You see, and I like the verse eight here, okay? The verse eight here is really interesting. It says, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. That is so important because like these people are going into sin. They're going into death. Do you understand? These people are, they bear thorns and briars. They bear thorns and briars. And so they are rejected, right? They are rejected. And these people are near unto cursing, you see? 
This is really important. They're near unto cursing. But it says that but those ones that bring forth herbs, right? When I read this, I'm like, you know, it seems like a farmer when he, you see God, when he plants his seed of his seed of herbs, right? And the rain pours upon it, right? And I'll, I'll probably not use the, the farmer as, you know, God in this situation, but this, a farmer plants the seed of an herb and then the rain pours upon it and it grows into, you know, herbs. The herbs obviously grows. And then it's saying that this farmer actually received a blessing from God because of the fruit that came forth, right? But this one that plants a, a an herb, right? An herb seed into the soil and then it grew in and, and then rain pours on it and then like it bears thorns and in, in briars, right? And in this case, I'll basically use Paul as the farmer here. Paul is basically the one planting seeds into the lives of these people, going to, to plant churches all over the world, Asia, you know, Corinthians and Corinth, Corinth, right? Um, Ephesus and many places, right? And so like what, like these people are basically like brain thorns and, and briars and, and, you know, Paul is basically saying that they're going to be rejected and they're going to be like very close to being cursed. And it's going to be really, really hard, like close to impossible to bring them back because it says this was end. You see, their end is going to be burned. And the Bible also talks about the, the, the consequence of sin is death, right? It's going to be hard to bring somebody that is dead alive again, right? It's going to be hard because of unbelief, okay? Um, so I says, but, and yes, we talked about the fact that we're going to go back to verse six, right? Verse six basically says that, you know, seeing that they crucify, why, why is it that they're going to be like having to suffer all of this like pain and, and not like, you know, <laughs> being renewed, the, 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 the punishment of, of non-renewal? right? It's like, they're going to like fall away and, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to renew them unto repentance because of what? Because of they crucified to themselves the son of God afresh. What does that even mean? It means that when we sin, like we're hurting Jesus. The Bible says that we are, the, the, the entire world is in him. Jesus Christ is where the body is the body and we're in him. We're by him, in him. The entire world, he carries our sin. Even now, he carries it. Do you understand? He carries it inside of him. And so that's why it's so important that if you love him, you will not want to afflict him, you know, by sinning. Because sin brings about death. It brings about corruption. It brings about, imagine if you're a body and then, you, you know, your organs are basically malfunctioning you're gonna be sick you're gonna be probably vomiting and just like feeling very very awful right it's the same situation here jesus christ is the body and we're in him by him even the unbelievers are in him and that's why it's our duty to preach the word of the lord so that they can be renewed and made afresh and so that they can stop sinning and so that you know everything can be good and christ can be you know made without afflictions right and so we as children of god we carry the same affliction we carry the affliction with christ jesus we feel his afflictions because we are we, we are in him we're, we're bonded with him right and so for us to actually inherit like gain our inheritance we have we have to suffer you know suffer with christ suffer with christ so that it can bring about the manifestation you know, of eternity, of immortality, of hope, right? So, and remember, let's go back to one which says, like, while we're in a waiting season, while, you know, we're suffering and while we're going through all of this trials and tribulation and FYI, you know, just because you're suffering as a child of God does not mean that you're not going to experience the riches in Christ Jesus. And let's just tap away from that mentality as Christians that, oh, because I'm a Christian, I have to be poor and actually suffer. <laughs> actually, like that's not the mindset, okay? The mindset is that be hardworking, do not be idle, right? Be perfect, you know, use your time well, gain skills and actually be resourceful and help the poor. That's the mindset, Okay. And we see this happening, like, you know, don't be like the situation of the 
Jewish people in the Bible, get, God blesses them with a lot of wealth, right? With the seed of Abraham, you know, we have a the life of abundance, you get rich and everything like that. And then you are hoarding all those things to yourself. God is saying that no matter where you are at right now, whether it be the bottom, the middle, middle class or high, higher class, it's, God is saying that you can give all you have and still start from the bottom and still make it to the top. That's the type of mindset that we all ought to have. All right, so that, that basically explains the, the sixth verse, basically that saying that saying they crucify to themselves, the son of God afresh, like they are crucifying God again and again and again and again, and they're putting him to an open shame. And I want you to like visualize this when you're reading the sixth verse as like, you know, Christ carrying the cross and, you know, going to Calvary to be crucified, right? Being afflicted, you know, and, and he's being flogged, right? By the, the Roman soldiers, and then like just this man who were actually like his followers and having received the Holy Ghost, then just being part of those people beating him, you know, and he's looking at them like, hey, like, didn't you remember like all those blessings that I blessed you with and everything? And they are spitting in his face saying that, you know, we don't love you anymore. Is that type of like that? That's the type of imagery this verse is actually given, you know, like we don't love you anymore and we're going to stay unfaithful right and it says you know this is what this eighth verse is saying like they bear thorns and briars these ones are going to be rejected like you're rejecting christ even the bible says jesus says that you know i will i believe i, I i'm going to just paraphrase basically it's like those ones that are you know they boast about me in public like i would also boast about them in the presence of my father type of thing and you know if you're like you know if you deny me I will also deny you in heaven you know I'm denying you too <laughs> do you know what I mean and it's like it's basically that like if you your your thorns and you're you're rejecting me spitting on my face and beating me right over and over again persecuting me because you're inside of me hurting me then you know you will be cursed because I would want to eliminate you if you're sick you want to get antibiotics to flush that thing out <laughs> you know it says whose end is to be burned you know it's really hard for you to actually like heal something that's already damaged right it's like you want to like cut it off take it out you know reject it it says verse 9 says but beloved we are persuaded better things of you right and things that accompany salvation though we thus speak right like paul has expectations of his followers right are you a daughter of paul i would like to identify myself as a daughter of paul <laughs> like because i like paul like i like his mindset like paul was a lawyer and like the way he writes and just like his mindset alone and everything that he has you know experienced while he was on earth right and just the burden that he carried and how he was able to like build that relationship with like his followers was extraordinary um so it's just like saying, you know, hey, like we actually have expectations of you guys and it's not like mediocrity, like it's actually perfection, right? Like you can't like basically choose a path and then be questioning and then thinking that, well, you know what, I'm just going to like do whatever I want to do and I'm going to come back and like, it's going to be okay. Uh, actually, it's not going to be okay. Um, <laughs> it actually is not going to be okay because it's, it's going to be harder for you to come back <laughs> especially when you especially those ones that have actually seen the power of god you've experienced the move of the holy ghost and then you leave and then you want to come back <laughs> it's going to be really difficult okay it's almost paul said it's basically almost impossible okay did he say it wasn't possible okay mm, i wouldn't say it's it's impossible i feel like it's almost it's going to be really hard Okay, it says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work, right? This is why you ought to be persuaded onto better things. Like, you know what it means to be persuaded? It means to be con convinced, convicted, right? Um, That better is good. Better is amazing. Better is nice, right? It's like better is the way to go. Like not worse, right? You want to be better. Like even if like you give everything that you have and then you have to start from like from one, it's like you're always looking up, not down. Like you're looking better. Like you want to be better, right? And the things that accompany salvation. And salvation, if, if, you, if we dissect the word salvation, it means like 
to save. It means healing. It means hope, right? So it's like, and I, I basically see this verse in terms of like helping people, being a light, basically. But it also has, personally, it might have to do with the collective and also like you as an individual, right? You as an individual, like you first start with yourself, right? Like you as an individual, like even if you're like from your, you feel like as if you're not spiritually there yet, you can aim to be better. You know, the goal is perfection. 100% is 100%. If you're in like 55%, like you can aim to be 70, 80, 100. 92 is not enough. 95 is not enough, right? 98 is not enough. The goal is 100%. Can you get 100%? It's absolutely, you know, possible. It's 100% possible. Can you be pure without a stain? It's absolutely possible, right? It says God, you know, it's not unrighteous to forget your works, right? Your labor of love, right? And I like this part where Paul basically uses the labor of love because that basically showcases that we're talking about the collective here, right? Like giving all that you have, doing the best that you can, you know, to show your love to others, to show Christ through you, right? It says, which we have showed towards his name. You see, you do it in the name of Jesus Christ, in that we have ministered to the saints and do minister, right? We we, we will obviously help those people that are non-believers, but it's like, we have to cater for our own first, like cater to the be believers, right? Because there are believers that are actually suffering because believers actually do suffer, you know, afflictions and persecutions from the devil. The devil attacks the church, all right, so we we cater to our own first. Like you want to make sure the internal is 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 good, right? And then you want to look out towards the external, right? But you have to make sure that the church is good, one hundred, before you start. And I feel like this also like has to do with like charity as well. Like if you want to do some sort of charity, and you know, like in this part of the world, you have your budget and everything like that. Budget to actually make a difference and contribute to church projects and I'm talking to myself as well you know and don't be limited in your mindset and I feel like it's always good to start with like charity works you know in your you know in your area in your locality um I feel like it's definitely good to start there <laughs> start there and if the Holy Ghost tells you like oh well you know I think there's this project in you know uh jamaica or nigeria or argentina that i want you to sponsor then it's like oh good like i'm gonna do that but, I, but there is if you look out the window you will see the problems out there you know from that perspective right you don't need to look too far to see that there's something wrong out there so basically um yeah so it's like that is that right um, we talked about spiritual growth, like spiritual growth, purity, um, working for God. It's not like, oh, I'm getting 92 out of 100 and it's good. Like you will know when you're walking at an optimal, like we're not here to be idle. We're not here to sit around and not do anything, right? Even those that are married ought to be working. Even if you have kids as a mom, you ought to be working, right? You can sit in your house, but still be, you know, productive, it says, it's do all of these things, not for your own glory, but for his name, for Jesus's name, in that we have ministered to the saints and do minister, right? And do minister to, there wasn't any, you know, um, quotes, but to any, like to the to unbelievers, right? To unbelievers, minister to them, because it's really important that we preach the word of the Lord to them so that he can reduce the affliction of Christ Jesus, because guess what? He still carries our sin right the word of the lord says that eventually when he comes to conquer death right that we will first be transformed like there will, there's going to be a physical transformation it's not going to be a spiritual transformation to our immor immortal bodies right and then we're going to ascend and then you know the whole thing will transpire where like you know it's going to conquer death and everything like that but death is going to be it, it says the bible says like it is through our own transformation that death will be conquered like we are our obligation god is like god has invested so much in us because of that is his assignment his assignment is like through us 
through me and you, it will conquer death. Like there will be a physical transformation towards immortality that will result in there not be any death. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, like the fact that someone, you know, lives and dies is a problem. Like the immortality is the goal. We talked about this in this other video. And I remember I spoke about this um entrepreneur that was basically wanting to like, he's basically really, really into like anti-aging um you know uh what should I call it science and whatnot right and he he basically wants to if he could live forever like he would definitely want to live forever because of all of this regime and everything that he's doing okay um I don't know if you know his name but I, I can't remember but yeah and that's the goal immortality right we're going to be immortal like we're not gonna die <laughs> like we might we might go to sleep eventually but that's not that's temporary death but we the saints we're not dying we're going to live forever like forever that's the goal ah <sighs> okay so and it says 11, and we do desire that every one of you do show the same diligence, the full assurance of hope unto the end, right? You have to, know, don't just like, you know, people that run a race, you begin the race and then you're running, pop, 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 pop. you know, you're running full speed, giving your 100% or perhaps you're even getting 100% sample song, okay? And then slowly it starts to go down. But the mindset in Christ Jesus is that, you know, like the world believes that once you get to that peak, you begin to fall. But the mindset in Christ Jesus is that humanly, like by our own human capabilities, that is 100% true. Once you reach your peak point, you begin to drop, even in, fit, in fitness, you begin to drop or you, or you just plateau, right? That's a, that's a real thing. Okay, by your own might, that's a, a real thing. But in Christ Jesus, He has given us the Holy Spirit to function supernaturally. That will continue to go up and up and up and up and up. No coming down. If you really are determined to, it's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. He has given us the power of choice. Are you listening to me? It says. And we desire that every one of you, this is an expectation, show the same diligence to the full assurance. Like you will walk your ass off, okay? Obey the law to the T. That if anyone asks you, it taps you when you're sleeping. John, are you going to heaven? You'll be like, what? Of course, I, I, I will. You're sure. Like somebody asks you like, hey, John, did you close the door? Yes, I closed the door. Of course I did. Like I remember very well I did close the door. That full assurance, sans poisson, a hundred percent that yes, you did close the door. Close the door to the devil. Okay. <laughs> you see, uh, full assurance of the hope onto the end not just starting strong and then finishing weak no starting and finishing strong that's the that's the that's the, that's the idea you see that ye be not slothful even proverbs talks about a slothful man right mm -mm. you don't want to go for those okay that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit what the promises like Paul, we're following Paul. I mean, I, I already said, said I was a daughter of Paul. I don't know about you. Paul, through his faith and his, his patience, right? He was, oh, this this old letter, the time that he was writing this letter, he wasn't in prison, okay? It was in prison. It was in prison. It was, it was bound to chains, right? Faith, he had faith in the word of the Lord, right? He had faith that everything that he's doing will result into something magnificent because it believes in the gospel, it believes in Jesus Christ, right? Find your, you know, be, be followers of them, not people that are slothful and lazy, okay? 
And, you know, I think about this too, and I'm like, sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring you in a very uncomfortable situation to make you just, you know, have discernment, to build your discernment, to make you realize that same things do happen, right? And I want to give you guys like a full-blown gist, but I definitely will. I don't want to do that because I don't want to take much of your time. <laughs> but like, I'm just saying now, like, it's like, don't be surprised that the Holy Spirit brings you into a very uncomfortable situation to just show you that, hey, like, I want to see how you're going to act in this type of situation. And just to show you that, you know, just to build that endurance, you know what I mean? Like, it don't because you're a Christian, don't think that you're going to everything's going to be smooth sailing. It's like, no, you you we have to train you, build your endurance, see how strong you are, and all of those things, right? Verse 13 says, For when God made pro made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. <laughs> this, this verse is really it's really interesting, okay? It's really, really interesting. For, for when God made promise to Abraham, excuse me, like there was nobody, there was nobody, okay, that God could actually like swear by, okay? You know, like some people like, I, I swear by my, I, I've never, I don't swear, but it's <laughs> like some people say, I swear by my mom or someone of higher authority, you see. And they, like, there is nobody greater than God. When he wanted to make a promise to make a promise to Abraham, he just he had to swear by his own name. Like I swear by my me saying I swear by my own name. It's like <laughs> the person that I'm I'm actually making the oath with would be like, huh? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's saying, saying surely, blessing will I bless thee, and multiplying will I multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise right god always keeps his promise god okay god always keeps his promise you're operating at you know sample song 100 percent, right if you've learned anything from this video is sample song that's french 100 percent. okay <laughs> if you've learned like see it's like god has your back if he promises you something it will bring it into you know realization just be patient, have faith, okay? For those people that are in their waiting season, waiting for God for something, and I'm also waiting for God for something, okay? Oh! <laughs> I'm also waiting for God for something. I know you're waiting for God for something. I know that you're waiting for God for something. You too, the girl at the back. I'm kidding. But we're all waiting for God for something, right? But don't wait on God, you know, grudgingly like you're just like super annoyed and frustrated and irritated i'm telling you if you have that type of negative energy okay like it's so easy for the devil to use you right like mm -mm. take a deep breath okay if you're feeling the type of negative and energy or emotions right now take your mind off of it go to the gym okay or take a walk Study the word of the Lord. Breathe, okay? Breathe. That is really, really important. And just surround yourself with like good people, right? Like like Paul said here, like people, what did he say? Let me see. Like followers of them who through faith and patience inherits the promises. People who actually believe are patient themselves, you know? That have faith, strong faith. Surround yourself around people like that. Okay? <laughs> And it says here, um, you see, and so after he had patiently, Abraham had patiently endured. It wasn't an easy time. Abraham endured. Remember when he went to Egypt and he was afraid that his wife, Sarah, was going to be taken by, you know, the the Pharaoh, right? He was afraid and he had to lie because he was scared. And oh my God, he had to deport him. Oh. I'm kidding. Oh my God. But those things actually did happen. It wasn't a smooth sailing journey for Abraham because Abraham had to go through a lot of things. He had to go through conflict with Lot. His peace was tampered with. Are you listening to me? That period, a lot of things happened to him. But Abraham had endurance. Abraham was strong. Abraham knew that he could make it. How many of you have gone through tough situations in your season of waiting and then you're like i don't honest 
honestly, I don't know that if that person is for me anymore, but God is actually taking you through that, that period of, of, you know, trials and, tri and tribulations to actually test your endurance. Because guess what? The journey is not going to be forever smooth sailing. Even after Abraham was, you know, after Abraham had gone through all those challenges, like God used those challenges, okay, <laughs> to open new doors. Because when Abraham had the audacity to go to Egypt and had to go through all those trials and tribulation in Egypt, he was deported with much more than he came with. But how many of you are willing to actually go through trials and tribulation? How many of you are? Because some of you are actually acting like is the Israelites. You, you don't want to go into the battle. You want to sit in Kadesh Banya and expect that God will bring the manna to you. But that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> that is not right. Sister, you cannot stay in your house and expect that God will bring the husband to you. Go and watch this, this short that I posted earlier. Learn your skills. Put yourself, you know, in places where God has positioned you to be. Listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks to you. Be observant. Be sensitive to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks. Okay? And God will bless you with whatever you want. Okay? All right, so you see, 16, for men verily swear by the greater, that's what we talked about before, right? And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. You see, if one country, you know, with another country, you know, two countries come together and they make a nego they negotiate, right? They negotiate um, regarding natural, natural resources, oil, you know, um, so the most the powerful country comes and it's like hey i want to buy your oil the 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 i'm just saying this is like an example you know the less powerful country is like oh great thank you 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 noticed me you want to buy my oil at least now we're going to be able to you know grow our economy and then they negotiate and then that one basically swears that you know what i i swear by this person i'm going to like give you this amount of money like da 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 all right mm -hmm. or like this sign a person of authority, usually the president, right? A greater person signs the 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 treaty, right? The the contract, whatever, signs it, right? Right. The greater person, not not somebody that's homeless. <laughs> An homeless person cannot sign the the oath, the treaty, the contract. Is somebody not as powerful? It is usually the president that will sign the, the treaty. Okay, and that basically is a confirmation to the lesser powerful country that hey <laughs> at least we know that we're going to be building our school tomorrow okay at least we know that we're going to be getting clean water at least we know that at least security in um Ijesha land or whatever land okay the indigenous land is going to be taken care of at least something is going to be taken care of right because we're going to be paid payday okay and that's what that's verse 16 is talking about. It says, and the 17th is basically saying that. You see, that is what the the the, the power of man can resolve. But how much more God? He said, we're in God willing more abundantly. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I'm having this attitude today. Okay. I'm, I am so sorry, guys. We're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heads. Hey. Hi. Hmm. Heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed by an oath, is wanting to show you. Wherein God willingly more abundantly. Hey, Kaya. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, digest that 17 first. So let us just digest that 17. And then you will go to verse 18. It says that by two immutable things. What are the two? Immuti immutable. That means unchanging, right? Those two things are unchanging. Those two things are number one. Number one. Number one. So can somebody guess right now? Can you guess? Can you guess? Can somebody guess? Do you want to guess? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to give you a time to, to guess. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you anyways. Number one is basically the will of God. If God says he wants to do something, who can change his mind? Can you? Hmm? 
if God has the will to do something, can you, you are not Abraham. Abraham negotiated with God. Per adventure, it was seven people who, you know, Abraham, okay, 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 okay. Abraham was a close tight body of God. You know what I mean? It was a close friend. Oh. Have you built your relationship to that point? Sister, brother. Huh? Huh? Have you? <laughs> it's real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay ah abraham, in fact go and read genesis you will see god, abraham's relationship with god abraham was serving angels <laughs> he was welcoming angels he was very hospitable to angels i tell you ah, are you kidding you see two things are immutable number one is the will of god that is immutable if god says he wants to do something hey he will do it Fini. that's it some some of you some of you guys actually have you know traits like God you know what I mean hey your father you're looking like your father your father you're looking like your father okay and you see the second one basically is what the oath the oath <laughs> okay those are the two things when God promises something it is a donzel. That's it. The oath is basically this promise is well and it's promise. Those two things are unchanging. Once those things are binding, there are, they are, they are what? They are unchanging in which it was impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. If he has the will to do it and he has promised something, sefinito. Okay. We might have a strong consolation. Now we're, cons what's the word? I wanted to say consoling. <laughs> we're comforted right we we might have a strong consolation now we're consoled mm? so god is saying hey my daughter relax hey hi you don't suffer or oh, try to understand <laughs> you're waiting in that time when you're like oh my goodness god i just want a job i have not been able to pay my rent for like two years now i hope it's not been two years guys please it's been a while you know, I'm I'm getting deeper and deeper in death. I don't know how I'm going to recover. You know, this is the time for you to have patience and have faith. You see, God is saying that all of this, uh, if I've given you my word, if I've promised you, you, go and check the promise in the word when God says that he, he, he has, you are, you are the seed of Abraham. Ha! You see, you function in the abundance of Christ. You understand? Like you're in Christ and you're by him. You are the heir of the promise. Do you know what that means? It means that you are the heir. Ah, brothers and sisters are you listening you are the heir of what a promise that means that you're already bind you're you're bound binded or bound you understand you are tied hey you're already your name when they were writing the contract your name was in that contract you know with with jesus christ with you know and we talked about this so i don't even want to reiterate you see talk i'm going to read you know why you actually are the seed of abraham and what that means you see go and check that short you understand if you want to understand the back end and how it means what it means for you to be you know the heir of the promise so because of your going through trials and tribulations right now does not mean that that is your 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 destination it does not mean that that is your life it does not mean that that is the end it does not mean that that is the conclusion to your story because of you are a child of promise do you understand you are a child of promise there is a light to the tunnel for you there might not be a light for other people the unbelievers those ones walking in sin but for you there is a light for you that is the faith that you ought to have that no matter what you find yourself in right there's always going to be light light will always find you there is light inside of you light will always find you no matter what, what the darkness that you're in light will always find you because you're not ordinary you're different you're the seed of abraham you're the light of the world the sword of the earth you see you're different okay <laughs> you're different Actually, you are. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter that you might be in a in a locality where everyone is is you know smoking cigarettes and just living waywardly. It does not mean that's gonna affect you. You will be the exception in that group because you are God's child. Are you listening to me? It says that 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible 
impossible. It's not possible for God to lie. That it's not possible for God to lie. Like God is saying that for sure, a hundred percent for sure. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Just believe me and wait. You're going to come out of that situation. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Did you, are you faithful to me? I'm not lying. You come out of that situation. Trust me. Believe. Wait. I'm coming. I'm there. Endure the suffering for a bit and you will see me in that situation. That is what God is saying because you're buying, you're bounded to a promise. You're at the head of a promise. That we might have a strong consolation. We might be consoled. We might be suffering, but we will have a strong, not a weak one, a strong consolation. We are fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Right? There is hope. In every situation, there is hope. We're running this race, but along the path, there'll be, there'll be, it's like when you're running a marathon, there's always people in different places you know that they have a water station they'll pass you the water to drink you might be running and it feels like as if the water is draining out of you and it feels like the salt is coming out from your skin and you're dehydrated and you just need some water god is saying hey shoddy no, god, god, god is not saying shoddy but <laughs> guys god is saying hey it's just a couple miles it's just one kilometers Maybe yours is 21 kilometers and I'm so sorry that it's pretty far, but you can walk. And if you have to crawl to get there, do it. Do it, do it. Just get to the water station. Get to the water station and you're going to be what? Refueled. Are you listening? That's it. That's it. Okay. God never lies. It's like your destiny. It's like that's your path. It's like when you're going to a destination, you know that that, that building is going to be there anyways. Like you're going there. Like, duh. It's, it's the same thing. Like the word of blood never lies. It's the same thing. And if you don't have that certainty, then there is something wrong. And that's the, the, that unbelief there is something that you have to tackle because that's what basically destroyed the destiny of the Jews. Okay. And they're not all Jews are, you know, Arianic. There's some that are messianic, and that's amazing, right? But that unbelief is something that you have to tackle head on aggressively, too. You can't let that defer you from your destiny. Right? See, which hope, okay, we have as an anchor of the soul. This is an anchor of our soul. Do you know what that means? <laughs> and you see, without it, wow. yo, you might as well be homeless. Honestly, it's like you don't have any hope. Do you know what that means? No light. You just walk in this walk. You probably be, you think that you probably have to steal to get by. You think that you probably have to do a lot of treacherous things to get by because you feel like I still don't have any hope. And you can, you can act, I can actually just put your mind, mind into like others, like those people that are that unbelievers. Just try to think like, oh, you see, if, if, if someone was hopeless, like how would they actually be thinking? You have, you'll be thinking that you have to do everything that you can to get by. You think that you have to do everything. You might think that you have to stay with that abusive partner. You might think that you have to steal. You might think that you have to get into prostitution. You might think that you have to sell your body. You might think that you have to cheat. <sighs> Lots, and it list goes on and on, okay? It says, Which hope we have we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure. This is sure, it's certain, okay? <laughs> it's certain and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. And I like the hope entereth into the veil, within the veil. And you might ask, like, huh, what do you mean is the veil? What do you mean the veil? What do you mean the veil? You see, that veil is what separates us from God. Sin, sin separates us from God. The hope is able to enter through sin. What is the hope? Jesus Christ is our hope. 
It says we that the forerunner is for us. It's not, it's not against us. Jesus Christ is for us. Jesus Christ is the hope. Not, um, I don't know what other gods people, not the new age gods, not your astrology, okay? Jesus Christ is the forerunner. He was the one that ran the race. The you know what it means to be the forerunner? When you're running a relay, there's always the person that will run the first leg. He has run the race. He ran it and he entered within the veil through sin to pass the baton to another person. He passed it to Paul, right? Paul ran the race to pass to another person. Now is your turn. Your turn. The, without the foreigner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ entered in, within the veil you see, Jesus Christ came into the world of sin as a baby, came through the Virgin Mary, right? He was brought up into this world, tempted like us, grew, us, grew, grew up like a human being, like a human child, like a human child. This story, and I feel like uh, there's not a lot of emphasis given to the story of Jesus because I feel like it is more supernatural than it's been portrayed. But I feel like it's it's good that they like you know, um, storytellers try to portray it in a more human point of view. But it's there's nothing you know human about God coming to this earth. There's nothing human about it. Okay, like. <laughs> it was a supernatural and I, I i wish that people can be more creative and imaginative and like in how they actually portray the story like what is your mind going to like how do you think that jesus actually lived this life like the the anointing that jesus christ carried was supernatural like things supernatural things were probably happening when he was like two do you understand you know that child that has a great ability that's special do you understand he's probably doing some weird things right and you're like huh? like why can't that be a Jesus' story you know what i mean like it's it's an absolutely beautiful story and i feel like it could be you know you could you, people can meditate on this on that story and actually get inspiration from the holy spirit is what i'm saying okay so i mean hey i digress but this is really interesting, guys. Like we in our waiting season, we have a lot of work to do. Um, I know that some of you might be waiting for one thing, like waiting to get to that next water station. And it's like, hey, there's going to be a lot another water station that you have to wait for. You might you will have to run to get to that water station, and you might have to walk to that water station the water station might, might be farther than the one that you actually walk to you know you might have to crawl to that other water station but the reality is that you have to get to the next water station you have to get to it right you have to you have no choice you have to get to that water station to be refilled right to get to the very end and while you do this be, be, be like utilize your spiritual gifts like paul said like utilize your spiritual gifts he said it to Timothy, utilize your spiritual gift, gift so that you can work, walk this, this, this spiritual walk, this Christian journey, you know, sample song, a hundred percent. Okay. Not 92, not 95, a hundred percent. It takes audacity. It takes courage. It takes sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. It takes love. And you see, if you, you know, Another fact again is like if you love God, you will want to actually walk this race a hundred percent. Like that's it. You will not want to take just anything. You will not want to put other people's opinion over your assignment, over your own life. And this life is not your own, by the way. Like you're not living for yourself. If you understand that you're not living for yourself, that will you know calm you down a little because you understand that hey, everything that I do has a con has consequences. And actually affects Jesus Christ, the one that sacrificed himself for me, the forerunner, the high priest. She's like, I have to act right. I have a responsibility, so I have to act right. I have to make. I, I'm I'm in charge of other people because I'm the sober one here, so I have to act right. And I have to make other people act right. I have to show them that it is possible to act right and to be right. <laughs> okay. 
so I was going to share something else. Yes, I remember. And, you know, I was I was watching this documentary and it's just about what's going on in the Middle East and the war. And, you know, I was watching everything. And I'm, I'm like, you know, you see all those people that they look so innocent. They look like they wouldn't hurt a fly. But then it's like, you know, they're being persecuted. But then it's like you never really understand the story. And it's like their story is not just like starting from the 21st century. It's been wars that have started like from centuries ago. And then I was just looking really deeply into like, you know, the imagery in front of me. And I just and there was this girl talking about how, you know, uh, the U.S. Um, soldiers came to kill her. I think it was a father and an uncle and, and uh, uh, basically our relatives, basically. And then, you know, I think it was our grandfather that asked her to say something to the journalist. And she just said to him, like, you know, you know, the US soldier said it in, in the language. I don't know if it's like um, I don't know the language, right? She just said it in the language. It must have been Arab, I'm not sure. She said it in the language. And she she said it. She was a very young girl. I think she was probably like six, five. And then, like, I just looked in her eyes, like, the cameraman, like, moved so closely to her face. And then you could see that that girl is no longer an, an innocent girl. She had seen deaths happening, right? Something in her eyes wasn't just so innocent. And that is darkness, right? That is, like, once you've seen that type of evil, there's an imprint that's been laid and it's like and I'm like oh god like these people they've had this history and it's and you hear them talking and saying like well if somebody were to kill your mother or your father would you forgive them right I don't know like having that type of unforgiveness in your heart killing each other and I'm like well you know can they just like because they seem to be victim, why can't they just like, you know, just go to heaven anyways? And it's like, Holy Spirit just convicted me and it's like, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the truth. So anyone that carries AIDS, unforgiveness, anger you know this negative feelings bitterness right will not make it to heaven no matter how young you are i know like in in many parts of like nigeria many things happen but i know like the older people try to you know shield the younger ones from seeing these things or even like talking about them. But it was very strange that our grandfather would act, tell her to speak about that incident. And I could just, you could just imagine like why, <laughs> right? And it was to make an imprint to, it's like writing it in history that you know what happened and I expect something from you. That you have the obligation to eat the oppressors so if jesus christ was to come today he wouldn't make it to heaven and unfortunately the law is the law so understand your assignment understand the word of the lord understand god's commandments when you're watching something and you're like, God says, love, love, love. Yes, but understand, <laughs> understand what's happening. Understand God, understand his mind, understand your assignments. And I think I said this already many, many times, understand your assignment. And it, 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 it means that you have to study the word of the Lord to understand the mind of God, to create a relationship to him, with him to begin with. And don't go taking sides, you know, and get yourself spiritually tangled with something that you have no business with. Your business is the word of the Lord. Your business is to be on God's side. Moses was on the side of the people. And that's why he couldn't make it into the promised land. 
be mindful in this time. And I'm saying this right now because like, I know a lot of people are wanting to like find the truth. Be mindful. Be mindful. Okay. So um, anyways, that is a bit about like everything in this waiting season. We have a lot of obligation, responsibilities. We're not idle in this waiting season. In your waiting season, you are running to get to the water works, the water station. You're not standing in your journey and expecting that someone, um, God is going to bring an helicopter to come and get you to the next water station. Like you are running this race. Ah, <laughs> are you listening to me? Okay. So, and I know that this message will bless somebody. I know this message is going to bless somebody. Somebody that is waiting for something and you're just frustrated. But the frustration is because you're not busy. Anyways, guys, I, I pray, Lord, that and I'm starting the prayer, by the way. You close your eyes. Um, so I pray that, you know, as you listen to this word, I pray, God, that, you know, the Holy Spirit will transform you. You know, the Holy Spirit will work amazing things in your life and will strengthen you um, to be patient and will increase your faith and we encourage you to study his word and we'll enlighten you give you the wisdom and the understanding to understand the mind of god understand the vision understand you know everything and just give you insight as to everything that's going on so that you are kept in a loop to what is corporately happening in the body of christ in the kingdom of god and you're not left ignorant right so heavenly father i thank you for this one so that they will be equipped with knowledge understanding and wisdom in jesus name to navigate their life journey in the name of the lord jesus heavenly father i give you all the glory in jesus name and i want to pray for those ones that are struggling in this time um those ones that have tested the power of the holy spirit but yet they are but they, they've been they've been feeding themselves with the message of repentance over and over again and thinking that you know their sins don't have any repercussions but i just pray that lord although it might seem like it's impossible for them to truly be dipped in you know just to be in you and to serve you a hundred percent once again and just to be by you and ha. Huh, I pray that, Lord, you will save the swans again and you will use them. You will use them in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray you will use them in Jesus' name. Ah, Lord, you can make the impossible possible. I pray the swans will be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus. But I thank you, O God. Be thou exalted, O Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So, guys, thank you so much for watching today's um sermon. Um, it's basically, I think I'm going to just name it what to do in your waiting season or the expectation for your waiting season i feel that would be a good title so yeah i just was reading the bible yesterday and i'm like oh like this is like something that needs to be said so what is the expectation guys it's what 100 percent so i wish you luck okay not even luck i know the grace of the lord is sufficient for you so yeah i'm just saying it and like you know just english language like i wish you the best on your marathon of life and um i will see you next time to equip you even more right to encourage you and um yeah that's just a bit from me today and um i hope you have a blessed day and um goodbye